Hello, hello to you, my fellow printed weebs. You're very welcome to another episode of Community News from 3D Jake. All the news from the community and what's going on with us too. I'm joining you from the 3D Jake office in the center of Graz in southern Austria, a city small enough to meet those people you want to meet, but big enough to avoid the people you don't want to meet. Here's what's going on in 3D printing right now. All right, so what's new in the shop? The filament. That's going to get confusing. Let's say spectrums the filament. Better. Why is it the filament to talk about? Well, because of this, the price. Look at this, it's 12 euro 99 for a one kilogram refill. That's nuts, how are they doing this? PLA used to be 25 euro to 30 euro for a really long time. And only in the last, like not even two years, has the price reduced substantially. Um, yeah, we've well, seen big reductions and I hope this continues, but this is like back then, uh, if you were getting a, a spool of filament of, of PLA uh, for under 15 euro, it was bad filament. That's not the case anymore. Eason also have a pretty cheap filament. They have one at 14 euro 39 right now. What kind of deals will we see for Black Friday, I wonder? Hmm. I mean, obviously I know. You guys have to wait. So anyway, this is Spectrum's The Filament, and we have 28 colors of PTG, 30 of PLA, and 24 of a high-speed PLA. And as I said before, the refill for one kilo is 12 euro 99, uh, but the spooled one is only 13 euro 99, and the PTG is also 12 99 for a refill, and 13 euro 99 for the spooled one. That is an affordable filament. They're clearly using some sort of dark magic to do this. In other news, a new bust generator and a new version of the Printmon generator are available on Maker World right now. I covered the Printmon generator uh, in the last video, I think, and I was mildly entertained, uh, but not super impressed by it. The new version of Printmon gives you the ability to use a reference image to create your 3D model. I gave it a shot. Okay, here we go. So I chose this cute little panda guy eating melon. Seems pretty simple, let's see what I can do. Takes a little while to load, but eventually it's done and you're greeted with a nice little render. When you confirm your choice, you should have a mesh available. And again, it's kind of semi-free. And here we go, There's that's actually still the render. Um, you can change colors, which is nice. You can limit it to four or eight or whatever. Okay, importing this to Orca Slicer, this is what we get. It looks quite similar, but when you zoom in, you will actually see that the lines around the color are kind of rough. It's pretty much the same as when I used it last time with the version 1. They don't seem to have improved that that much. And you're probably better off just painting it yourself like this. Okay, now we're trying the bust generator. Trying it with our good old friend here. Yeah, that's that's definitely Jesus. So again, it's the same kind of mesh quality as the print mons. I mean, it's okay, I guess. There is, however, no color with these, unfortunately. You can generate your own stands. Oh, that's Rather undersized. Oh, <laughs> you can give him glasses. Looks so cool, Jesus. <laughs> this is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, looking very nice. Very smart. Oh, those are the glasses. Oh, the shutters. Oh, that is... That is wonderful. Yeah, I think he's better with the shutters. So to sum it up, I would actually use these for starter models. So I download it, I would import it into Blender or ZBrush, and I would sculpt it more until it's perfect because the the quality on these right now is it's kind of meh i don't know i i wouldn't use this barring that barring using it as a starter model i don't think i would ever use this tool what i am worried about is people like overusing this and overloading maker world and other model hosting sites so that you search for something and you see this beautiful render um, as the main image, and then you click on it, and uh, it's just the worst, the crappiest AI-generated model you've ever seen. And unfortunately, that is happening a little bit already. I think it's kind of high time that all model hosting websites have a, a filter that you can use to, to limit AI models in your search. Uh, yeah, I hope that doesn't happen. I, don't, I hope we don't have to have something like that. Yeah, eh. Next up are printer releases. So the Creality K2 Plus 
is coming to the shop very soon. It's like the bigger brother of the X1 series um, from Bamboo. Everyone wanted a bigger X1, uh, and now we got it. Uh, but it's from Creality. I have mine just in the corner over there out of shot. Uh, I'm still testing it, so I'm not going to give any opinions just yet. It will happen soon. But it is cool that we do now have a fully enclosed, large, multi-material printer. But we are entering prime printer release season because Form Next is happening pretty much right now. And we have already seen a few new printer announcements. First up, basically just announced yesterday, is Prusa's Core 1, which looks really interesting. It's basically the Mark IV, uh, but in Core XY form. Prusa is not really that well known for having printers on the cheaper side. The Mark IV right now uh, in the assembled form is about 1,200 about 1, euro. Um, uh, but the Core 1, however, is 1,349 euro, which is a lot compared to the more common Chinese varieties, but I am surprised that it is only a little bit more expensive than the Mark IV. What is very cool about this printer is that they are releasing a conversion kit to change the Cartesian Mark IV S into the Core XY Core 1. That sounds like a lot of work, but it's really cool that they're doing this. The Core 1 is bigger and faster than the Mark IV. It's fully enclosed. There is a heated chamber control. You can use the MMU3 with it. It looks like a really nice printer. I, I really want to try it. What else is coming out? Ah, the Anycubic Cobra S1. This is Anycubic's first Core XY printer, uh, which can be used with the ACE Pro multicolor system as well, which is currently now only available for the Cobra 3. Uh, this should be released in the new year. It looks very familiar. I'm sure you'll agree. There is also the Cobra 3 Max, which uh, you guessed it is, is big. Uh, it's the same size as the Cobra 2 Max, so that's 420 by 420 by 500. It's pretty big, but it's also being released in conjunction with the Ace Pro, so it's going to be a very, very big multicolor printer. Uh, also going to be released in the new year soon. Awesome. And FL Sun have also got the S1 Pro, which is very, very similar to the S1, um, it's quieter and more precise. There's not that much information uh, released just yet, unfortunately. Okay, that about does it for this month. As always, links to all of the stories and products mentioned are down below in the description. We have a community news channel on our Discord server. So if you want to talk about the stories that we talked about today, or you want to bring up your own news story, then you can do so there. We'll be back with a video next week. So tune in and we'll see you guys then. Later.